Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now what we're going to do today, um, we've got a new I.O. for demonstration. Um, during lockdown we sort of, basically there was nobody, cut, but the shop was closed so we couldn't really do any demonstrations. So we sold off the, our demonstrator I.O. partly because there was a big, big waiting list for these. Um, and it's only just really catching up. I mean it's, um, at one point you were waiting a couple of months plus for, for an I.O. So, uh, we've actually got quite a lot of stock of these now, so time to get another one out. Um, so we're going to unbox, go through the unboxing, and then we'll have a look at the amplifier and sort of um, go through a few of the features and uh, go from there. Okay. Okay, so I amplifier. Um, as I've said before with these, the, the, these boxes are held in with little metal clips. Um, the best way to do is get these out. Get your fingers underneath. Just <laughs> be careful to not break the box so. bit by bit. <laughs> Quick edit, somebody came to the door. Um, right, okay, so take the clips out. These clips always take them off. Them away from the box because um, basically you can easily scratch yourself, well, badly, badly sort of scratch yourself with these, and you can scratch the equipment when you're uh, taking it out. So get these way out of the way. Sorry, I'm out of breath. I've been running up and down the stairs. Um, so yeah, inside the box, very simple packaging. Um, it's almost just sort of eggshell thing. If you've watched the um, the Riga. A CD player, the, um, the Apollo CD player unboxing, same packaging really, uh, swapped just on a small scale. So you take that out. Staying part of the packaging with it. So, there you go. Mains lead. Well, that's too bad on that. On this side, Remote control, a couple of batteries. Right, instruction manual. Now, Riga didn't used to be particularly forthcoming with instruction manuals, really. It was a, uh, the idea was that the dealer would take you through everything. Um, things have kind of moved on a little bit now. But quite a, yeah, quite a decent little manual, sort of um, socketry and everything in there. Okay, right, so I take off the uh, Plastic, to this end. Should this without any stools? <laughs> Always come prepared, obviously. Oh, that's not the best way to do this. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any way to get into this without looking the bag to be honest. Right, right. Here we are again, uh, Riga I.O. Um, this was filmed a couple of days after the original part of this video, so it's, it's almost like a bit of a spot the difference, um, continu continuity nightmare. Um, it is a different cup of tea, um, different t-shirt. Um, yeah, so Riga I.O. So pleased actually that this has come out. I mean, it's we sort of almost pleaded with Riga for a long time to produce something under the brio because there's there are amplifiers at sort of two, three, four hundred pounds around that sort of area, but they tend to be quite compromised nowadays. They can't, and they tend to they're sort of trying to sell themselves more on features. So they'll have Bluetooth and they'll have an inbuilt DAC and all this, which is, is kind of useful, but if you want a little system that's very, very purist and sound quality first, by having those things within the box, you're actually paying a percentage of the price of the amplifier for the Bluetooth and for the DAC and for all these other things that they put in there, HDMI switching and all sorts of things they put in. Um, so the actual amount of money available to for the manufacturer to use on the amplifier itself reduces and reduces. By actually being in the box they affect the sound quality just by the actual RF noise that comes off them 
um, drawing from the power supply and everything. The Riga doesn't have any of that. It's purely about sound quality, you know, full stop, all about sound quality. Um, and it works really, really well. It's, it sounds like a Riga amplifier, which, I mean, it's the, that's probably the biggest praise you can give it, really. It's, it does sound like a Riga amplifier. It's got that big, natural sound. Um, it does drive speakers really well. I mean, it's rated about 30 watts, which is kind of average nowadays, but it's a bit of a strange thing to say, but a, a Riga 30 watts isn't necessarily the same as anybody else's 30 watts. It's, the been amplifiers over the years that have been a bit like that. Um, NAD were always renowned for it. Um, they'd rate their amplifiers at set, set figures, and they, they, they always performed way more than you would have thought. I mean, the, the point is that this has got a big transformer, it's got very good drive current, um, it, it's fairly happy with lower impedances, whereas lots of high power amplifiers, because they're sort of engineered to drive sort of, sort of 100 watts or so, into eight ohms, they're not actually that good at driving into lower impedances. And what tends to happen there is you find that the amplifiers will only sound good at a, after a certain level of volume. Riga generally, like a lot of the really good specialist amplifiers, because they've got so much current and because they do produce greater amounts of wattage into lower impedances, they still sound very good at low, low volumes. You don't have to turn them up. You're not looking for the sweet spot, which is always a little bit louder than you want to listen. So they've done a really good job with it. Um, there was talk of them doing it as a Class D version. I mean, don't ever think that Riga just, just are, are complete Luddites and they won't look at new technologies. Um, but I believe they did actually do two prototypes. One was Class D and one was standard Class AB, like, like the IO. And they couldn't make Class D work well enough to put the Riga badge on it. And Class D, Class D really, in theory, should be, should be a good choice because uh, it's very, very efficient, uh, runs very, very cold. You can put them into very small casework. You, know, you can actually mount them in a very small case. You don't have any problems with heat dissipation or anything like that. And you can get much higher wattages out of, the, out of, out of Class D modules. Uh, but they do sound quite sterile. So it's quite difficult to make a Class D sound really, really good. And they tend to either be very, very cheap or very, very expensive sort of cheap and sound horrible or expensive and sound great, but when you look at the price of them compared to other things, then they're just, yeah, strange. Yeah, anyway, I'm going off, I'm going off subject as usual because I'm not script, <laughs> because I don't script it, I'm going off on a, off on a tangent. Um, so yeah, let's, so we'll talk through some of the features. There aren't many features on the IA, to be honest. Um, all you get is a power switch, Button on there, flicks between, like a Brio, as you, as you get cycle, that cycles through the inputs on the front panel, little LED trails along, any volume control. Um, first input is record player, and then you've got two other inputs which are line level, so you can plug in CD player, streamer, um, tuner, I suppose. Uh, various, yeah, any, anything that's line level, TV, actually, if you've got a stereo output on your TV, you can use that. Um, might not seem like an awful lot of inputs, but nowadays people don't seem to don't actually seem to plug that many things into their amplifiers. It tend, tends to be a record player, CD player, or, or CD player or streamer. Very rare. It's more than two, you know, two, two or three items. Um, years ago, it was sort of. I was thinking back actually when I started out in the early eighties, well, perhaps the very early eighties. You sell a system and it will be record player, CD player, CD player which was just sort of coming out. They'd want a tuner, they'd want a tape deck. Sometimes they wanted two tape decks. Um, quite often there'd be a pair of speakers and a pair of speakers for the kitchen and a switching box. Uh, all that's gone. It's all very much now single source amplifier speakers or possibly two sources. So I don't see the problem, there being a problem with just two extra line inputs and a phono stage. Um, I think it's yeah, I think they've, they've measured that quite well, really. Um, I mean, if you go to the Brio, and this is quite a good opportunity just to show how, God, show how much bigger the Brio is. If you go to the Brio, on here you've got, um, I've got to look at the back now, because I can't remember. You've got six, five inputs on it, including the phono stage. So um, that's, yeah, so phono, phono stage input and four extra. Uh, I can't think of uh, I've ever installed one of these to anybody who's been using more than one or two inputs on it. So um, 
Yeah, I don't think I don't see that as a problem particularly. Um, I just forget how heavy they are. It's quite a bit of weight in this actually, but it's not. <laughs> it's like a lovely zebra. Uh, back panel. Um, as you can tell, I'm making it up as I go along. Um, yeah, you've got your two inputs for the record player. I'll take left and right for input and um, earth connector. Uh, some record players have a, have a separate earth rig, so have an internal earth, so you don't need it on a rig. Um, then you've got two lines and you've got your um, binding post and four mil there as well. So the binding post, there is actually uh, a hole through the actual body of that there, so you can put your cable through and tie it down, or you can use blade plug. And then standard IEC on the back there. So yeah, that's that. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, one thing I've forgotten is it has actually got a three and a half mil uh, headphone jack on it as well. Um, fairly unusual on a specialist amp to have that, but I think I think the, the thinking behind that is that you probably wouldn't be spending two or three hundred pounds on a headphone amp to go with this. So um, and because it's probably just in a little budget system scenario and people aren't going to be wanting loads of extra boxes, then just a little socket on the front of there. And it's actually quite, it's properly designed. It's not taking away, you know, too much from the actual design of the, of the amplifier and the sound of the amplifier. I think it's all, it's all separated out with relays, I think. So it's, it's not actually sort of interfering with the main amp. Um, also, you might have noticed it just appeared. I had to do a quick run downstairs. Um, there is a remote control, actually, again, quite unusual. But I think nowadays, you, yeah, you, you need to have a remote nowadays. It's one of those things, I think, really. Um, but it's, it's pretty much a bit of a system remote. Move across with that to show that a bit better. We've got um, volume up, down, selectors, selecting input. Uh, the rest of this is all for CD players, so it looks like if I select down there, and you've got. I've never looked at this before, I'm just making a. <laughs> don't know what that's for. Um, yeah, CD and up and down, and input select. Or even the other way around, and there's a mute button on there. So it's, it, it looks like it's you know you can basically run a rig or polo off this and run your I/O as well. So so you can change your volume, change your, you know change input, um, and that's it. But yeah, it's quite nice remote. That not probably nicer actually than the ones that they're, they're giving giving out with the uh, the Breo and the and the Apollo. So whether the, it's all going to change to that possibly it already has. Um, so yeah. Right. So that's that's the Riga I/O. Um, Wonderful little amp, um, proper Riga product, uh, great, great sort of heart to any system really. So um, thoroughly recommended it. Right, recommend it. Um, if you want to listen to one, give me a call. Come down to the shop. Um, yeah, just let just let me know. Um, I hope you like the video. If if you really like it, then give us a like and a subscribe. Um, quite pleased. We're nearly 500 subscribers now, which is quite humbling to be honest. Because I've why people would want, would want to watch watch me waffling on about hi-fi, I don't know, but um, yeah, get some really nice comments. I do get some really nice comments about it, so yeah, many thanks for that. Um, I'll leave it there. I'm going to try and do some more of these quick reviews um, as new things come in. We've got a few new products coming in soon, companies I've dealt with in the past, which I'm bringing back in again. Um, so yeah, so hopefully I'll have some more things for you. Um, thank you very much. See you. See you soon. Input select. Volume control. There you go. Don't look at that, that's a secret prototype.